Ben Pierce from the Roadster Tracker. Rocket Lab recently successfully launched its first mission ever to the moon, which is the small satellite called Capstone. It's a CubeSat class vehicle, although as NASA tends to do, they're on the larger side for CubeSats being about 25 kilograms, roughly a, I think it's a 12U or something like that spacecraft. This um, spacecraft has the plan to navigate itself to the moon in a orbit that's called a near rectilinear halo orbit. Essentially, it's this kind of halo type orbit that's nearly rectangular. It turns out that that is a really good orbit to get to the moon and specifically for the gateway program. So it's pretty nifty for that purpose. And Capstone's going to test this out. The gateway program, which is a part of the Artemis program, getting humans to land on the moon will take advantage of this orbit. And this officially thus became the first launch for the Artemis program to get humans back to the moon. Very exciting times that we live in. This mission had a little bit of a hiccup. You see, it successfully separated on July 4th and about 11 hours roughly, it was noticed that uh, the communication stopped happening with this satellite. It, um, people were trying to listen to it from the ground. They weren't able to pick it up using the deep space network. They were not able to see it and it really looked like something was wrong. About 43 hours later, roughly, it uh, spontaneously started working. And both the fact that it failed and the fact that it succeeded in recovering itself have to do with some software issues that I wanted to talk to you guys today about because I have a little bit of experience with this. And I know some of you out there are working on designing satellites and have a huge interest in that. So. Let's get down to what exactly saved the capstone mission. So first of all, what caused the problem? They sent a command to get some extra telemetry, but that command was not properly formatted. And this bad command should have been rejected by the software on the spacecraft, but in fact it was not. And it basically caused the system to lock up. Uh, we don't know exactly what happened, but we know the radio stopped working. So let's just assume that the radio stopped working, but the other subsystems were working more or less correctly. We know for a fact that it was able to save flight telemetry, that it was able to maintain its orientation and maintain its charging. So those are three systems, typically different unique systems on a spacecraft. And it, we believe that all of those were working during that time based off of what we have received. The one thing that we know did not work was the radio. So presumably something happened with the radio that caused it to lock up because of this badly formatted command. The 43 hours later is almost certainly some kind of a watchdog timer. On any spacecraft, because you can't just get up there and you know pull the plug or take the battery out or something like that that you would fix with an electronics on Earth, they have some kind of a watchdog that says that, hey, if I don't receive any kind of signal in some period of time, I'm going to take steps to power cycle various things to get them to work. Um, usually this is limited to maybe the radio. Uh, sometimes you can reset the entire spacecraft. There are different ways to do this, but generally speaking, you go through more and more aggressive things. The very first checkout, maybe after only a couple of hours and not touching it. And that may just send a message to check to see, Hey, is every system on the spacecraft alive? And if it's not, maybe you'll reset it, but otherwise you're not going to do anything. If everything is continuing to function, then maybe after 12 to 24 hours, you'll reset the radio. You'll put the spacecraft into safe mode, which may limit the functionality. And at least for low Earth orbiting, relatively inexpensive satellites, I see them tend to reset themselves entirely where every single subsystem will have a hard reset. And usually that can recover the spacecraft into an operable condition after all of those issues. Not all spacecraft do that. It is pretty risky. Uh, for instance, a, a Mars mission, you would not want to do that because the 
time is critical otherwise you don't know where earth is and it's really hard to figure that out without knowing what time it is so you have to preserve a little bit of information but you will definitely reset the various components in a way where you can preserve this critical state information that will allow you to safely maintain communication with the operators. So what went wrong with Capstone? Well, in a more expensive mission, such as the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which I happened to work with when I was a student, anytime you have a new packet, a new thing that you're trying to send, you'll send out these packets to a called the flat set, hardware in the loop, or something like that. But the general idea is, is you lay out all of the electronics for your spacecraft and you can run the flight software. The electronics will either be identical or they will be non-space based, but otherwise identical. The space based stuff has some radiation protection, stuff like that, that's expensive. So it's pretty common to not use exactly the same stuff. but Generally speaking, it has to function as software exactly the same in order for this to be useful. And so we run these tests to see what we can get out of them and we can learn an enormous amount of stuff through these, these tests. And if there's an issue, we'd rather see the lockup happen on the ground. But because the capstone mission was not a particularly expensive mission, it was a mission of opportunity, a small pathfinding mission, but it didn't have a huge budget they probably didn't have the time to run every single command stack that they would possibly do, so they sent up a bad one. This stuff happens. No human is perfect, especially when you're doing something as large as a flight software for a spacecraft. But what you need to do is to make sure that no matter what happens, you're gonna get into a safe configuration. Part of that is achieved through these watchdog timers, and another thing is via, there's a couple of different mechanisms, but generally speaking, you have one set of software that is pristine, you know it works, you've done extensive testing on it, and that software will remain the same no matter what you're doing. Um, sometimes this is called the golden record. The software is tested on the ground with the most extensive testing because this has to be essentially bulletproof you may have limited functionality in here. For instance, if you have a camera on a spacecraft, well, the core functionality will not involve taking any pictures. The core functionality is to make sure you can power on the computers, you can write new software, you can do diagnostics, but the imaging software will be updated periodically. If it's communication with Earth, that is a primary contact, especially with the ground station. And so you'll have to ensure that your code will, your golden record will maintain the communication with Earth. The flight computer will have a similar thing. And essentially you wanna have the software set up so that as long as you can talk to the radio, then you can upload software to it and also upload software to the flight computer. And then the flight computer can talk to all the other boxes, but you have to be able to maintain communication no matter what happens. And so part of this watchdog may involve resetting the computer and going to the backup mode, which may have been what happened here with Capstone. I'm not familiar with exactly the internal workings. The bottom line is, is with some clever software design, one can avoid any kinds of issues that may be unforeseen like this and take the Capstone mission and still have it go on its way to the moon. With the trajectory it's on, which I will fully admit I do not understand at all, it's got a six month journey to get to the moon and that's gonna save a lot of fuel and it also saves it in this case, in the instance of a direct send to the moon, you'd be having to make these course correction maneuvers very frequently. And you know, it took the Apollo missions three days to get to the moon. If the spacecraft stopped working after 11 hours, and hadn't yet done its first course correction move well, by the time they actually started talking to it, it'd be time to enter into orbit around the moon. And clearly that would be too late to really make effective use out of it. But with this clever orbit, they're able to do some stuff. I wish the advanced space team for uh, Capstone a lot of luck and 
Congratulations to NASA to finally getting an Artemis mission off the ground. Thanks guys for everything and until next time, keep on tracking. Take care guys.